Good afternoon. My name is Allison Peltier, and I'm in the Doctor of Nursing Practice program here at NDSU. Today, I want to talk to you about a word that no one wants to hear from their healthcare provider. Cancer. Think about how you would feel if your mother, daughter, or sister was told that she had cancer, and the cancer could have been detected much earlier or even prevented. Unfortunately, this happens all too often for women with cervical cancer, especially American Indian women. Cervical cancer is the third leading cause of cancer among women worldwide, even though a screening strategy called a pap smear can detect early changes in cervical cells. The main cause of cervical cancer is a sexually transmitted viral infection called human papillomavirus, or HPV. There are over 100 different types of HPV, but two types cause up to 70% of cervical cancers. The good news is that we have vaccines that exist to prevent against up to nine different types of HPV. Since the development of the HPV vaccine and pap smear, cervical cancer rates have declined for all groups except American Indian women. American Indian women, especially in our area in the Northern Plains, experience high rates of cervical cancer and are twice as likely to die from cervical cancer. So an important question is why do American Indian women experience these disparities or inequalities in health related to cervical cancer? Research has shown healthcare providers may not know the answer to this question. So my research focused on identifying contributing factors to cervical cancer and educating healthcare providers to improve care delivery. What I found was that these disparities are likely due to a combination of unique risk factors and barriers in healthcare access. One main risk factor is that American Indian women have a wider variety of HPV types that are not covered by the vaccine. They are also less likely to receive the HPV vaccine or engage in routine cervical cancer screening. Certain cultural beliefs may also interfere with cancer screening because talking about cancer is thought to cause cancer in certain American Indian cultures. My research then focused on implementing an education module for healthcare providers, and the results revealed significant knowledge gaps. Prior to the education, between 30 and 65% of the healthcare providers were able to correctly identify contributing factors to cervical cancer disparities. After the intervention, the number of correct responses increased by up to 35%, confirming the need for further education. Through increasing knowledge and awareness, hopefully we can eliminate these disparities and reduce the number of mothers, daughters, and sisters affected by cervical cancer. Thank you.